Hi, in this video I will introduce you to an open source project called SP Easy Forms. SP Easy Forms is a new approach to customizing SharePoint forms, or rather it generalizes a bunch of old approaches used by developers for years. The twist is that you don't have to know anything about development in order to use it. You also don't need a form administrator in order to deploy it. It is deployed as a no-code sandbox solution, meaning that it's comprised of only JavaScript and declarative markup. And it works on both SharePoint 2010 and 2013 on-prem, as well as SharePoint Online. SB Easy Forms allows administrators to configure how a form should look and act through a drag-and-drop user interface on a list settings page. Once configured, when a form is opened, SB Easy Forms reads the configuration and customizes the form on the fly using JavaScript, jQuery, jQuery UI, and SP Services. This is the first in a series of videos demonstrating how to install and use SP Easy Forms. This video will focus on installation, which should make for a pretty short video because there isn't that much to it. So first I want to give you a brief introduction into what SP Easy Forms is all about. This is the new form for an out-of-the-box SharePoint contacts list. The best thing I can say about this form is that it works. I mean, you can fill in some data, submit it, and it will save it. To more accurately describe my feelings towards this form, let's just say it's aesthetically challenged. And that's generally true of SharePoint lists that have a lot of fields. The forms look bad. Now this is the same form with some SP Easy Forms configuration applied. Some fields have been organized into multiple columns. Other fields have been organized into jQuery UI tabs. And still other fields have been organized into a jQuery UI accordion. In addition to modifying the form layout, SP Easy Forms can also be used to configure the way some fields look and behave in SharePoint. For instance, in this form, the job title field has a type ahead capability applied to it that pulls data from another SharePoint list. Also, these three lookup fields have been configured as cascading dropdowns. So for instance, sales division and sales state don't have any options to select right now. When you select a sales region, the sales division dropdown gets an appropriate list. When you select a sales division, the sales state gets an appropriate list. Finally, you can configure conditional field visibility, meaning some fields can be hidden or made read-only based on the current user's group membership, the value of other fields in the form, or the form type, or any combination of those. So in this list, these two fields here have conditional visibility rules based on the value of code. So if I change code to green, these become read-only. If I change to red, they disappear entirely. Let's move on to how to get it and install it. First, you have to go to speasyforms.copeplex.com. This is the project homepage. To download it, click on the Downloads tab. That will automatically bring you up to the latest stable release of SP Easy Forms. You're generally going to want to download the latest stable release, which at this time is 2014.01. What you're downloading here is a WSP file, or SharePoint Solution file. Once you've downloaded the WSP, scroll down the page a little, and you'll see that there are a number of bugs reported against 2014.01, all of which have been fixed in add-ons 2014.01.15, which is also recommended, so click on that. Add-ons is just another WSP, which contains mostly hot fixes for the latest stable release, but also contains some new functionality released incrementally. Once you've downloaded both packages, switch over to the site collection that you want to install it on and go to Site Settings. Then go to the Solution Gallery. So in the Solution Gallery, hit the Upload button. 
browse and find where you downloaded your SPEasy forms. and activate it. Now do the same thing for the add-ons package. The add-ons package isn't a standalone thing. It does nothing by itself except for slow down your site a little by downloading some JavaScript that's going to be totally inert. Unless you've deployed SPEZ forms, it does nothing. That's really all there is to deploying SBEasy Forms. Now let's make sure it's been deployed correctly. Go to a list, bring up the ribbon, and hit the SBEasy Forms button. This is the UI for the settings page. Basically, it looks a little like an IDE. It's got a ribbon where most of the action takes place. There's a what you see is what you get sort of editor on the right hand side. And on the left hand side, you see the field list and your containers and stuff you've configured. I'm not going to go much further into the interface. That's going to come in follow up videos. But I do want to mention two things. One, there's an about page which will tell you the version that you currently have installed and if you've installed add-ons the version of the add-ons you have installed gives you the license and also lets you know all of the third-party software that I'm using in SPEZ forms all of which is JavaScript and all of which is licensed MIT or public domain the second thing is there's a help file here and there's about 40 pages of online help so this is the place to go if you want to figure out what's going on. Or you can just wait till my next video comes out and I'll start talking about layouts. There are a couple of security considerations you should be aware of. First, SBEZ Forms installs all of its files in a folder in the style library in the root site of the site collection where it's installed. If a user doesn't have access to this folder, SPEZ Forms isn't going to do anything for them regardless of how it's been configured. Also, if this folder is configured to require a checkout, then because of the way module files are installed from a sandbox solution, all files will come in checked out, and no user will be able to see them except for you until you check them in. If you've already installed SBEZ Forms, and all of your files are checked out. Because there are so many of them, the easiest way to fix this is to go to the library settings page, versioning settings, and uncheck the required documents to be checked out before they can be edited and save it. Then delete the SP assets folder in the style library, disable the solution, re-enable it, and the files will come in checked in. The other security consideration to keep in mind is that SPEZ Forms configurations are stored in the Site Assets folder of the same site or the list that was configured is. Any user who can modify these files can modify the configuration for SPEZ Forms. Any user who can't see these files won't see any SPEZ Forms stuff on the page when they load the form. Anyway, that about does it for this video. Download it, take it for a spin. If you like it, I'd love to hear from you on the project homepage. There's a discussion board. If you find a bug, let me know that too, and I'll look into it.